Oh, are you guys ready to go see Papa and Nana? Mama, Papa, Papa, Mama. Yeah. I do remember that picture. Papa, Papa, Dad. You excited to go see Papa? Papa? Let's go. Papa, Papa, Dad. Let's go see Papa and Nana. Mama, Papa, hey guys, good morning. So we are on our way to the garden center right now to do a little bit of houseplant shopping slash maybe a little bit of early Christmas shopping. I've got a couple of people on my list who are gardeners. Uh, so they're actually really fun to shop for. Uh, but you can see in the background, I think we got some snow yesterday and it stuck around. Our low last night was 20 degrees. Uh, the sun is out, which is great, but I thought today would be a perfect day to kind of fill some of the spaces in our house that I've been clearing off. Uh, usually when I get ready to do a new season, like decorating for Christmas, I go through and I remove house plants that maybe don't look so great and move them out to the studio to maybe recuperate them. Some of them go to friends and family's houses, but I've got some empty spots and I also want to pick up some amaryllis. Here you go, dude. What do you see, baby girl? Oh, the owl. Oh, it's so sweet. Hi, Samantha Grant. Come on, come on. Where are you going? She has her horse toy. Yeah, isn't that cute? Oh, what are you having? Oh, you're having the spicy black bean patty. How do you like that? I love it. Yeah, it's a good one, isn't mm -hmm. it? Oh, oh, thank you. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. We're here to do a little houseplant shopping. Are you? Yeah. Well, you know what? We've got some houseplants. Yes, we do. <laughs> or yes, you do. I saw them last time. Okay. I am going to just take a spin around in the houseplant area, take a look at the amaryllis, and I probably need a box. This should do. I'm just going to start myself a pile oh, of course you are. right here. <laughs> okay, so first of all, the waxed amaryllis, which are really nice. Have you ever had one of those, Monica? No, I kind of thought about it though, because that really fits what I would want to do of not having a mess of planting it. Yeah. So <laughs> not having to water or I plant. Can water it or plant it, I can just pluck it. Plunk it on my counter and yeah. call it good. And they do grow really beautifully. I mean, these yeah. are already going for it. These look like little socks. They do. Well, I kind of like the real, real glitzy Yeah, ones. those are really pretty. You know why not? These right like here. Good. Yeah. Although, okay, you guys. So here are the bulk amaryllis. There's some beautiful ones. Like, okay, so I already picked out one of these. And I might get a, well, there's two more. That might be a sign. Um, those are awesome. This one's beautiful. It's called Magic Touch. It looks a little bit like on the salmon side of red. Of course, I like the classics too. Um, there's a double dragon. I want to get one of those. So I guess let's just start picking these out. My goodness, look at those roots. Double dragon. <gasps> pretty. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. I feel like I need to have like three of the Magic Touch. Don't you think? I think. Yeah. Yep. Let's do it. Go big or go home. <laughs> There's the classic red lion right here, but I don't know if I want to do like the bright, bright red. Not sure. I do like this one. Monte Carlo. I think that'll do me an amaryllis for a while. Uh, I, I think so. I'm on purpose trying not to show you too much of the Christmas stuff because I don't have their poinsettias yet. And I really want to come back and do a full Christmas tour once all of those plants have arrived. On our way to the back sunroom, some gorgeous ferns. I think I need one of these. It's like a rabbit's foot, right? Usually do pretty well with these. The strawberry begonias are gorgeous. I have one in the Hartley. I might need to put one inside. Yeah. You're making me want to take stuff home now. Am I? Yeah, now I'm kind of uh, feeling inspired to get an amaryllis going. Oh, you should. Uh-oh. Oh. Are those beans? No, I oh. wish it was that I could or. have the beans. Okay. Oh, corn. <laughs> Darn. This is seed store jokes. Well, this is a, this is a real nice bag. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. You guys remember this fountain? We recently set it up along with a concrete bench right here. Well, they both sold. Concrete bench went to a new home, and the fountain, they're going to let us keep it here until spring so we can have that nice water sound back here. I just love grape ivies. I feel like I could use one of these somewhere. Since I was the one who put this display together, I almost don't want to rob from it. Because you know, I know the time it takes to put this together displays and move stuff around and find just the right plant for it. 
I don't know though, I'm tempted. Some Calatheas here, which I'm going to avoid because they are fussy. Oh my goodness, there's a lot to look through back here. Some really nice Chef Lara's spider plants. Look at all those babies. And these, $26 for this huge plant with all those baby starts on the bottom. That's pretty amazing. Oh, you guys, I'm seeing more grape ivy. So I will take one of them home today. Probably that one. That one looks really pretty, doesn't it? My parents have had one of these in their house for a long, long time. And every once in a while, my mom goes in and just hacks the whole thing back and it just flourishes, really does well. Some ivy down in there. That might be really nice. What do you think? Like maybe even around some of our amaryllis? I think so. And they're in little itty bitty containers. That makes them very easy to work with. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, probably. No, I think we'll need six. Look at those, aren't those beautiful? Love the how worthy is. And the Hoya right here, oh my goodness. It's called Hindu rope. That's amazing. A whole bunch of peperomias and then just assortment of different succulents in here. Some are pre-potted, which is so nice. And these little hypertufa makes such easy and great gifts. Yeah, look at all of these. They're so pretty. Oh my goodness. The name of these is just right on the tip of my tongue. I cannot think of what it's called. Oh my goodness, they're really pretty though. Purple undersides to the leaves. Some really beautiful begonias in here. These are really pretty too. This would look pretty with the apple blossom variety of amaryllis. Regina red arrowhead vine. Beautiful begonias here. Look at that. I don't think I have one of these. Not this variety. I think I should maybe try one. Oh, now Monica is picking out amaryllis. Should I get a jumbo and try that or just do like a classic dark red? Oh, they're all really pretty. I kind of like the color of this. The better. deeper red. Uh -huh. I like the idea how you can get so many blooms off yeah. of this. Yeah, I think you'll get lots of blooms. They're good sized bulbs. They are. Mm hmm. Like yeah, that's okay. a that's a beauty. Now, yes, I have to do it now. <laughs> oh my! Look at this display. Just chock full. Really pretty china dolls. I have one of these. Gosh, these are so pretty. Peperomias are so awesome. Oh my goodness. <gasps> that like a little bonsai start. Isn't that cute? How fun is that? Okay, I do not know what that one is, but that is so pretty. Look at the white variegation there. What? Really? Oh, have you been? Oh. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. Oh, you match really pretty with that uh, display, you Samantha. This is for everybody. See some more. Oh, no. oh baby. itty bitty pig. That's a baby pig. Oh, baby my. Pig. That is a little thing, huh? Yeah, there you go. Oh, there's more ivy down here with a broader leaf, a little bit bigger, too. That might just be pretty all on its own in a container, wouldn't it? Yes. Peperomia raindrop. Isn't that beautiful? Look at this mix right here. Isn't that beautiful? The ferns and begonia and there's a mangave in there. There's another grape ivy right there. That is so beautiful. That's a Calathea right there. Calathea Network. It's a really good name for that plant. Oh, I love these, but I kill them every single time. We're so dry here. It's hard to keep them happy. Are you riding on that dog? Yeah, well, she's got her baby pig in the basket. Oh. Hi, there. Okay, I've got my amaryllis in my house plant, so now I'm gonna look around and just gather up a few little things uh, for gifts. Okay, so the other day I picked up some of these, which I think I'm gonna pick up a packet of these. I also picked up some of these for myself, but I think 
these would be a perfect gift. And this is one of my favorite Cosmos ever. Xanthos are so gorgeous. For gifts, I usually like to give things that you can direct seed, you know, easy things to grow, just in case they don't wanna, you know, dedicate a grow light space and that sort of thing. It's a good one. Oh, this is the one I grew last time. Can you direct seed this? Start inside, dang. <gasps> Look at this, baby girl, that's so pretty. Oh, you like the birds. Need me to come? Okay. She said camera. Uh, it sounded like she said camera. What? Oh, you see the snowman? Yeah, that's pretty fun. Can you say snowman? Snowman? Uh huh. Yeah? Yeah. That's a baby Jesus. Mm hmm. That's a cow. What sound does a cow make? Mm. Yep. What sound does a sheep make? Bah. What sound does a baby make? <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, guys, back at home. We're gonna work in the studio this afternoon. It's really nice out. Like in terms of greenhouse temperatures, the sun heats everything up so beautifully. It would be wonderful to work out in one of those, but all of my pots and other supplies are closest to this location. So this is where we're gonna be working. While we were out, a box from Little Prince showed up. I mean, the timing is perfect. Uh, usually they, well, they send out plants from time to time. We've done unboxings before. They're usually house plants. So I'd like to get this unboxed before we start potting so that I know what we have because I have no idea what's in this box. So let's do that quick. Okay, just trying to clear some space here. Now, I'm not really sure this box was delivered with this side facing up, even though this tag has the arrows pointing this direction, but it would seem kind of odd to have the opening of the box on a place where the arrows aren't pointing to. Anyway, let's see how they look. I'm always excited to open up boxes from Little Prince because they, I think of all the places we've had plants delivered from, they always have the nicest packaging um, and they usually have some really uh, neat plants, like some stuff you don't see all the time. Oh, that's the right way, see? Okay, so first of all, when you get it, you know, they're all individually wrapped with this like kind of corrugated paper all taped, so let's get all of these out. It looks like there are five plants here. And taped to the bottom of the box is a heat pack, which is still a little bit warm. First one. Oh, that's a pretty sense of area right there. Okay. So once you get the paper off, they have this, is it sisal? Is that how you say it? Sisal, sisal. And it's rubber banded <laughs> to the, the top of the pot so that none of the soil falls out. And then we just need to ease this off like that. Do that. 
well, other than me tipping the pot, it wouldn't have lost any soil. Oh, that's really pretty. Sansevieria Jade Pagoda. Hanai, that is beautiful. This is a pink princess philodendron. Oh, that is gorgeous. Look at the variegation on that. That is beautiful. Rare variegated philodendron displays large, thick, leathery maroon green leaves highlighted with splashes of bright pink or white. A vining evergreen that needs a support to climb by aerial roots. An excellent houseplant, well adapted to low light. That's really good to know. So I will probably need to get some kind of a pole or a trellis for it to adhere to, um, to keep it happy. Neurogelia, Neurogelia, wine and gold. Ooh, that looks like a bromeliad to me. Is that another name? Oh, it is a bromeliad. A bromeliad, Nor Norogelia, wine and gold. That is so beautiful. Look at the coloring on this one. <gasps> So this, a large bromeliad with colorful, broad, stiff arching leaves forming an upright rosette. Beautiful wine red leaves are dramatically speckled with gold and green. Leaves mature to a speckled olive green. Oh, a raindrop peperomia. We were just looking at those down at the garden center. Oh, oh that's such a nice, thick specimen right there. Now this one grows, oh, just six inches by six inches is a small house plant. Shiny green raindrop leaves on a short, upright clump house plant. Occasional mouse tail flower spikes emerge. Easy to grow. I like easy to grow, especially when it comes to house plants. Okay, La well, no, second to last one. Ooh, this one's cool. Is this a type of ficus that's curly? I, th I think it is. Let's get to the tag. Ooh. Oh, that is so cool. Okay. Ficus pandora, curly weeping fig. Slender branches with shiny dark green leaves, an excellent house plant, bring indoors in winter, tender, prefers partial sun or bright indoor light. Look at that. Look at the leaves on that plant. That's so interesting. Last one is in, wrapped up in this paper. Let's see, I don't really wanna cut through the paper, just in case. Oh. It's not plants. I'm glad I didn't cut through it. It's socks. I would have cut through those socks for sure. Little Prince socks. So they're little frogs with crowns. Perfect. Thank you, Little Prince, for sending out these beautiful new plants. Perfect time of year when I'm right in the middle of refreshing my houseplant collection inside. I love it. Uh, you guys, I will put a link to all of these plants in the description below, and Little Prince usually gives us a discount code as well if you were interested in ordering any of these or all of these, uh, but I'm just not sure what the code is, at the, like off the top of my head at the moment. So we will put that in the description as well. Let's take a quick look at the whole haul, starting on this side of the table. We've got the grape ivy, which these usually will grow like three feet by three feet, and you can see that they do trail. Um, it likes pretty bright light to be happy. For us, like I think the one my parents have, it's right in a spot that gets actually some filtered afternoon sun, um, but it's very filtered. It's light coming through trees, so it's not like really intense on it. So I'm gonna be pretty mindful. I'll probably put it in a south facing window, but back away from the window a tiny bit. Um, and then I've got this ivy right here. I'm not even sure what exact variety that is. It's green ivy. I mean, you know, it's pretty. We've got some variegated ivy. I got six of the little guys. So there's three there and I've got three right over here to possibly tuck in around amaryllis. I think that would be really pretty. For amaryllis, I ended up with three of the white nymph. Uh, that includes the one I picked up the other day. I added two to it today. I just love the doubles. I think they're so beautiful. Uh, the double dragon right here. So it's a little bit darker than the traditional red lion. And then of course the double flowers. I got a three of the magic touch, which are the more salmon colored amaryllis. And then one of the Monte Carlo. So I think that's what, seven or eight? Three, six, eight altogether. That'll be a stunning display. Uh, for gifts, these make such great gifts. I love to get seeds as gifts and love to give them as well. Uh, two variety, no, three varieties of Cosmos, the double click blend, which I grew this year, apricotta, which I did not grow this year um, because I would have had I had the seeds, but they're gorgeous. I'm gonna grow them next year. 
uh, the Xanthos, there's the African Bride Love in a Mist, and then Florist Sunny Bouquet Sunflowers. I love that blend. I love kind of these peachy colored ones. Um, and then there's kind of like the lemonade or like teddy bear style. Uh, but they're all fairly tall, like four to six feet tall, and there's a white one in the mix. And then over here to add to the gifts, I've got a packet of Lumina pumpkin seeds, a garden marker. This is the best garden marker I've ever used. I have no idea if this one's any good that's in this set, but I'm gonna give these together and just say like, you could try this one, I don't know, but this one I know works well. And then these beautiful galvanized garden marking tags, plant identification tags. And then we've got the little Prince plants that we just opened up today. And we've got the fern, we've got the strawberry begonia, and then this begonia right here, which doesn't have a name on it, but it's just really interesting looking. Uh, there's the rest of the amaryllis. And I did pick up a couple of packages of moss. I wasn't sure what I had on hand. I'm pretty sure I've got some, but I will use all of this. Um, at some point in a project this winter if I already do have some already open. Okay, now we need to locate some containers. We've got a whole bunch of pots right here. We're gonna have to kind of pick around though. I really need to organize them again. They kind of get to looking like this toward the end of the season. Plus we've got all the Christmas lights out, you know, cause we're working on that at the moment. Um, so we're gonna have to work around those. It might be kind of fun to do, you know, a couple of those or amaryllis that I've got three of. I'd like to maybe put them together. But I've got lots of terracotta, lots of really beautiful vases and like iron containers. Oh, it's so heavy. That one's really beautiful. Okay, I think I'm gonna start with the grape ivy just because it's the biggest, and then the amaryllis. Now, I recently potted up some caladiums in the greenhouse in this container right here. Some of you guys might even recognize that um, from that project. Uh, those caladiums ended up having spider mites. I was kind of suspicious when I potted them up, so I, I uh, separated them from the herd, from the rest of the plants in there, and just watched them, and they did have spider mites, so I ended up removing all the tops, and I just saved the bulbs with the rest of them instead of trying to even treat the plant. I already have a hard enough time trying to keep caladiums happy inside anyway. Add spider mites on top of it, it's not even worth the struggle. So I do have those bulbs in a box, they're being saved, but that gave me this container all cleared out. And I think, I don't know, I kind of feel like the amaryllis might be beautiful in here with some of the ivy instead of the great big grape ivy. Let's try that. So for the amaryllis, typically what you want to do is um, not put them in too big of a pot, uh, unless you're putting it in other stuff or putting multiples in a pot, but typically you only want to put them in something like this right here. And I hope you guys can see that, but there's just about an inch, maybe an inch from the side of the bulb to the side of the container. And you don't need much soil either. Usually you want your soil to come up about halfway up the bulb. You don't want any soil getting in the neck of the plant or water. So if you don't have the soil level up high, uh, it's just less likely that water will, you know, sub up over the top of the neck of the bulb because that can rot them out pretty quick. Um, so they do like to be constricted, but you also want to keep in mind that they do most of the time need to be staked at some point because they grow up so tall, they're usually not super anchored in what they're in. So it can tend to want to, you know, make the plant lean. So just make uh, plans for that in the future in whatever container you've got them in. So I'm just gonna put a little layer of potting soil in the bottom here, and I think the white ones would actually be really pretty in this pale green pot, which means this one goes in a different pot. This is one of the magic touch variety. Right, hang on, let me get my act together here. So this is the potting mix I'm using. It's the organic potting mix. Let's put a little bit at the bottom. We do have to keep in mind that I'm gonna put ivy around this as well. So we're gonna to need to kind of compromise on the soil level here. So that's where I've got it right now. Now we're just gonna take our bulbs and kind of set them in here. I actually think I need a little bit more soil. It's pretty. 
I can just imagine what this is gonna look like when we've got white blooms with that pale green on the outside of the pot and the ivy, this ivy right here. I can't even believe we're at the point of the year right now where I'm actually even potting amaryllis. Like it feels like every year it gets, uh, it goes faster and faster. Like Christmas just rolls around so fast. Okay, that's about perfect. Now I'm gonna tuck in some ivy. Okay, now a little bit of the forest moss. There, that makes it look really pretty and kind of tidier and complete on the top right there. I am gonna go out really quick and I'm gonna grab a few branches. I wanna create a little bit of a grid so that once the amaryllis grows up, it's got something to help keep it upright. Okay, I grabbed a few branches off the black cat pussy willow shrub that we have out at the end of the west side walkway. Some of them have some really beautiful colors, some really nice red, but they're flexible and long. And that's the most important thing uh, when you're creating a grid. So you can see that I still got some leaves on these. It'll be interesting to see if they actually root. <laughs> they might. Uh, these produce those gorgeous furry catkins in the wintertime. So I think this is gonna be a really nice thing to use in here. So when we create a grid, I'm gonna pop it in. And then this side isn't quite as strong to help guide it through here. Seems like there's always a spot where there's a natural bend where it creates the nicest looking loop. Um, like if I tried to do it here, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't create that nice loop. So if you take your branch and just kind of give it one of these, you'll see where the natural top is to that bend and that's right there. Oh, does that not look so cute? I think I might tie a little bow on the top with twine just to keep them all together. Also, landscape staples, I've got this one right here that's not really wanting to stay in as far as I would like it to. So I'm just gonna tuck a landscape staple down in there to help hold it, hopefully help hold it down. Let's see if I can get it done here. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Look at that, you guys, isn't that so cute? And now when the amaryllis grow, uh, I probably won't have to do anything. They'll just grow through the grid. I'll make sure once they you know, reach the top that they've got a clear access and they're not hitting one of the branches there. I might have to tie a little piece of string to one of the branches and just kind of weave it around uh, just so that it keeps them from you know, falling down maybe like this way if they come up and then want to fall down that way, but I don't think they will. I think that is so pretty, I love it. Ah. Let's do our Magic Touch Amaryllis next. And there's three of those, so I wanna find a really pretty container for those as well, where I can do them, I think, all together. Okay, I think this is gonna be the perfect container for the Salmon Colored Amaryllis. We can fit three in there very easily, and I don't know that I'm gonna try to put anything else in with it. I don't think I've got anything, well, maybe some spider plant babies. I've got a few of those in here. Okay, well, let's just see how this goes. Same thing, a little bit of soil at the bottom. Try not to get it too high in there. And let's just get it done. This container is from Unique Stone. I cannot remember the name of it, but it's oval and it's got little bows on the end and a garland right here, which is perfect for the holiday season. Ooh, I don't know if these are gonna fit. Fold number two. That's a little bit of a tight squeeze. You know what? These can grow enveloped in wax. I think we're okay. <laughs> we're just gonna go with it. And I'm not gonna put anything else around them other than moss. 
This is preserved sheet moss and it usually comes out in a little bit bigger chunks like that. It's really beautiful. Now let's see what a few of these branches looks like incorporated into this one. That one turned out really pretty too. So I think that these are gonna do what we need them to do to keep the amaryllis upright. Plus these are in there so tightly, like so tight together, that I think they would hold each other up. But it's kind of nice to have some instant vertical impact while we're waiting for the amaryllis to fill in. So they'll grow up, you know, and have blooms way up here. And then this will just be a nice grid work at the bottom, really, of the arrangement once they, uh, you know, start doing their thing. Also today, I will be watering them in, and then I don't water them again until I start seeing a little bit more growth. And then it's usually about a once a week job is all. All right, guys, I think at this point, all I really have to do is two more amaryllis, but I'm going to pot them separately because I only have one of each of the varieties. And then I've got to pot all the rest of these. So I'll line them all up when we're done so I can show you what each of the plants ended up in, how they look, and then we will go out and place them. they are they look so good so starting here with the grape ivy I just went one size bigger with the pot I need to still water everything to settle all the soil in but it's so much easier to move them when they're not wet and heavy um, so this terracotta pot's clearly been used before we get nice hard water stains on everything but I honestly I kind of love it I kind of like the patina they get as they age and are used more and more so I think that this one will be happy in this container Right back behind that, we've got an ivy in a metal container that's got this little trellis right here. Uh, we can kind of train the ivy up the trellis if we want to. We've got the white, the white nymph amaryllis planted in this container surrounded by all six of the variegated ivy, which will grow and fill in. And honestly, you could train them up these little branches here if you wanted to. Some of them can go up, some of them can go out. This is kind of similar to the arrangement I had in this. Uh, actually, did I plant that right before Samantha was born and eventually had to pot some stuff out, but I did a similar kind of trellis thing. These are all pussy willow branches right here. Tied them together at the very tippy top, but I think that's going to work out perfectly. Right behind that, we've got the, uh, what is it, Magic Touch? Yeah, Magic Touch Amaryllis. Three of those with the beautiful branches. And then this one right here is the Monte Carlo. Oops pick up the tag right here let's see that's a little gray container and branches just kind of willy-nilly worked in but kind of interesting looking and this one will grow up either right through here or right through here we can kind of shift the branch over depending on where we need it to be and then I built kind of a little fence around this one so I used some leftover these were just sitting on the floor from when I trimmed all the rest of them so I picked all those up and put them around the pot I was gonna put them in a teepee and then I thought well I can't do that because that needs to go right up through the center. So I ended up cutting them off shorter and then just weaving some willow branches in, kind of creating that little interesting, I don't know, well, fence to keep it, keep the uh, amaryllis in check. Here's the pink princess philodendron right here in a pot, terracotta pot that I gold leafed years ago. I love the way that looks. I felt like I needed to have a fancy pot for a fancy plant. Then we've got the bromeliad, which looks really pretty. Now I went ahead and planted this in regular potting soil. Um, we'll monitor the moisture level. It likes to be uh, 
fairly moist on the moist side. So uh, we're just gonna keep our eyes on that one. And then we've got the fern here. I did not top dress most of these plants because I want to see moisture level. Um, this one I felt okay doing it with because I've got another philodendron that I know how often I need to water it. But the rest of these, I always like to see how fast they dry out wherever I end up putting them. And then I'll top dress them after that, after I have a good idea um, about how often they need to be watered. We've got the peperomia here, the ficus in the back, and another terracotta pot. You can see I really just like classic containers, terracotta, gray concrete, for the most part. I feel like plants are really contrasted nicely and show off nicely in pots like that. There's the Sansevieria and the beautiful begonia right there. So you guys, that is it for today's video. What a fun day, just going down to the garden center with my family and just hang, we hung out for there for a little while. Um, and I hope that I didn't give away too much of the Christmas stuff. I cannot wait to go down there and do a full on tour. And I think I wanna do it in the evening when the trees just look so sparkly and beautiful. Uh, and then just coming back here and getting to spend some time in this studio space, which this space has been such an amazing blessing to have. Oh my gosh, I can't even, imagine or even remember what it looked like before. I mean, I can, but I can't at the same time. It's weird. Um, it was just, this used to be a horse barn. For those of you guys who didn't see it in the early days, it was a horse barn when the previous owners bought the house because the barn was built before the house was. And the house was built in 1919. Um, but the, when the previous own, owners moved in, they had a concrete floor poured in all of the bays of the barn because it was all just dirt floor. Um, but it was really well constructed. I mean, it's really solid and this room just stays so beautiful and so nice and warm and the humidity level is nice. I don't know, it's all just great, I love it. The plants would actually probably be really happy if I left them in here. So thank you guys, all that said, for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.